Welcome to another episode of the 10 Minute Land Surveyor. My name is Dave Woolley. Today we're talking about the practical use of Lee Square for boundary establishment. Oftentimes surveyors will find themselves in an old neighborhood uh, where the monuments have long since been gone and it's common practice to split curbs or to use improvements to establish uh, right of ways, center lines, so on and so forth. And a lot of people, what they do is they'll split two curbs at one, one end of the block and split two at the other end, trying to remain perpendicular, and they'll call that the split of the curbs. Well, if you have 300 feet or 600 feet and this curb is old, these curbs tend to move in and out. You have tree growth, and you're not necessarily or very unlikely, actually, to be getting the best representation of the curb. And that's where these squares comes in. I'm going to go ahead and show you a drawing. This is an older area uh, in, in uh, Long Beach, California, and we're splitting curbs in addition to the monuments we found uh, because there's obviously some kind of problem we found out there. We're not sure what it is, so we were able to date the curbs. A lot of times the curbs are stamped. Your field crew should know to look for the stamping on these curbs and know how to collect them. So if you, if I, as I zoom into this drawing, you'll see here top of curb shot, and if you we look down here, top of curb as we go through, and you'll see that there's a there's curb on, on both sides of the street, top of curb, top of curb. And as we continue down the street, uh, more and more top of curb. Uh, and when we go down here, you'll see what these blue lines are here in a moment, top of curb. So we have all these top of curb shots, and we want to do a, a best fit linear regression on, on these to get the center line of the street, or at least to check our center line. Maybe we have some sketchy monuments or some monuments that weren't preserved well. Anyway, so what, what you can do is, is almost, well, it doesn't matter what software you program you use. You can use uh, Civil 3D, you can use the old LDD, you can use Carlson. I, I just chose Carlson today, and there's pull downs for this, but if I just go best fit, you see uh, best fit circle, best fit curve, best fit line and I'm going to choose this one. And the reason is, is it'll, it'll show you down here how do you want to do it. You can do it by point numbers if you knew what the series was, or you can do it, uh, I'm just going to use screen for, for the application. So it's saying select the entities. This is my uh, south side curb. So I'm going to select these entities. There we go, selected. 2D line or 3D line. I'm going to go ahead and say a 2D line. Uh, parameter to hold, I don't have any parameters, and there is my result. And based on the last video, if you watched it, uh, which you should before you see this one, you see that my residuals are shown here. And the residual, as I explained in the last video, is the solution, the line solution, and the delta to the measurement. So when you go through, what I'm looking at here is I have a standard deviation of my residuals of about 5 hundredths. My average residual is 5 hundredths. My max residual is 8 hundredths, and that seems good. Now, in the event that, let's say that this particular one here was a tie. Uh, it wasn't actually on the face of the curb. It was a center of the curb. So, and I know that to be a fact, so I, I would go in here and I'd say turn the process off it recalculates without that point, and you can do that. But I caution you, don't start taking things out that are meant to be equal weight because it's to get a good report. That's actually donkey, that's not smart. Because you want all of these measurements in there, good, bad, indifferent, because that's going to give you the best solution. Uh, so you're very unlikely to take them out. That's why I said in this one, if it's a tie, take it out. So I say, okay, uh, solution. Now I save this report because I want to say, put it on a map later or potentially. And you'll see here that I have a bearing of Southwest 89, 17, 13, and it's about 300 feet to those points. So I say, okay, I get rid of this report and there's my best fit line. I repeat that command and uh, I go screen like this, and I select the entities, I come over, I get them, there they are, return a 2D line, yeah, no parameters to hold, 
Now look at my residuals. This side actually fits better within itself. I'm basically four hundredths. Uh, three hundredths is my average residual, four hundredths. I have one that's outlying at seven hundredths. I say OK. I save this report out. You'll see that it says here. And there's my line. It's about the same distance. Fine and dandy. I keep that. Then I would go line and nearest. And I would grab a, a point on this line. And I would go uh, perpendicular to this line. And I'd do the same thing here. And go nearest. Grab the line. Perpendicular line mid to mid. And that is the center line of my street taking into account, you know, whatever I have here, 30 monuments or 30 top of curb shots or whatever it is I'm doing. And that's, that's how you determine the center line splitting the, the, uh, the, the curbs. I would match the properties here. And there's my center line. And that center line, all things being equal, would be the mean of the two lines. And then from here, I would offset. Let's say it's 30 feet. And I would go here like this, 30, 30. There it is. I would make those right away lines. And there is how you would do that. Now, this, the, it's the same whether you're using top of curb all the way down the street, both sides, or whether you're using front corners as, uh, on a map. A lot of times uh, here in Southern California, you'll find some scribe uh, crosses or you'll find some pipe set on the front corners. Now, stop and think about this for a second. If you have two center line monuments, even if they're, let's say they're two uh, hand wells or monument wells, brass caps on the center line, and let's say I have uh, 10 property, front property corners on the north and 10 on the south, so I have a total of uh, 22 monuments. 20 right-of-way monuments and two centerline monuments. In what world, and they're all set per the same tract, in what world or where is the citation that says those two centerline monuments trump the other 20 monuments in that same subdivision set by that same surveyor at the same time? It doesn't make sense. Those monuments are all equal to each other. Centerline doesn't have any priority if it wasn't there prior to the front being set. So it's kind of a donkey move to hold the center line offset and call the front corners off when they actually could fit each other. So what do you do in that case? Well, you could take a center line monument and offset it, let's say 30 feet to get it on one of the right of ways. Maybe take the other one, offset it 30 feet to the north to get it on the right of way. Best fit those lines, best fit the lines. Then split the midpoint. Then you have your center line, then offset back out to your, to your right of ways. Now you have a 22 monument tracked center line and right away. You don't just use two monuments. Now down here you're going to find uh, sometimes that the center line and the front monuments don't fit that well and the reason is is because they were set at different times. The uh, surveyors would set the front corners uh, uh, upon completion of the subdivision but they didn't set the front the uh, center line monuments until the uh, final lift on the pavement was done. Sometimes it was months or years different and when they came back in, all the control was gone. Uh, the, the front corners were set off the original control. And you'll find oftentimes that if you start out on the exterior of the tract and you traverse in, those monuments are record between each other and they're record coming from the exterior of the subdivision in, but they don't always fit the front corners. And that's because they were set off different control. In that case, you may actually call off your center line. Uh, you still want to best fit them. But that, that's how you use least square to do boundary establishment. Well, what does that look like on a map? Well, I, I pulled up a map here that, uh, that I did in 2006. I actually do it better now, but this was just a map that was handy for me. Uh, better just in displaying it. So if you look at the map, what you see here is I have a, a subdivision map, and I have uh, Los Ranchos down here, and you'll see each one of these monuments, and, and they're remarkably well surveyed, 59, 59, 60. Now, we measured each one of these from uh, two locations, and we like to measure them with a, a 032 peanut prism to take the bubble air out. So we, we have a, 
a pretty good way of locating them. And if you look, they're uh, chiseled crosses on the sidewalk, offset one foot along the property line prolongation. And uh, this is an old track done in the 50s. And so I located uh, the center line of these, this road was long gone. Over here on right of way, I only would have potentially had one, two, three monuments, actually four possibly. And they, I only actually found one down here. So I jumped to the uh, south right of way and I positioned everything down here to make sure I had it. I did a best fit. I offset 29 to get my center line and uh, 30 from there to get my north line. And I did the same thing over here on uh, Los Altos. I, I, I did a best fit both sides, split them. And then you'll see here that this B, if you go to the sheet, it's gonna say set by intersection. And what that is, is that's an intersection of the monuments, uh, of the right-of-way monuments to establish the center line. Now I have my center line intersection. And I did the same thing up here uh, on this, this uh, line. And then this would have a B on it, which is established by intersection. And you always want to go to the other side of the street because you, you're supposed to have 26 foot wide right of ways. Uh, but I've, I've actually run into them not being equal in, in very rare occasions. So that's how you best fit to establish. And so all said and done to establish my uh, six corners or whatever I had here, monuments uh, on this subdivision to establish this, I had uh, probably 30 monuments. And when you go through and you look, well, how, how do they all fit together? Well, if you look here, I had a, a, a 218.29 is record, and I had a 218.35. So I had six hundredths uh, north-south in that case. Let's uh, see what I had over here. On center line, about 750 feet, I had uh, five hundredths there. Between these two monuments, I had 300 feet and I measured in 300 feet record. And those are real measurements. Uh, those aren't me just showing measured and record. Here I am within a hundredth. And you say, well, how was that done or how is that possible? Well, I'll tell you how it was done and how it was possible is you'll find this is very common if you resurvey tracks done in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and really the 80s. Uh, because we didn't do radial stakeout in those days, and we, of course, didn't have RTK. It didn't exist. And so radial stakeout causes these lines to, to look like a sawtooth. But in those days, what you would do is you would, you would have your center line control. You would set a right-of-way monument. You would set one at the other end. You would move on to the line, and you would literally look down the line, sighting down the line. And the chain person, you would chain down, in this case, 60 feet. You would scribe an arc, and you would uh, set, a, set a, a temporary point is what you would do, is you would go through, and, you'd, and you would literally do one left a hun, right a hun, and you would get these exactly on, and you would chain down these temporary points, and then you would check in to the point that you set on the end. And if you had anything substantial, you would come back through, and you would adjust just those points, holding your line. But in this case, everything was within a hundredth. So if you're retracing surveys from, like I say, the 40s through, we didn't really start doing radial stakeouts until, until the, the 90s when we could hook up uh, calculators to the gun because it was a lot more work because we had to calculate azimuths. And so you, just to give you a history lesson for the younger folks is you'd set a back azimuth in your gun, you would write down all your azimuths on a, a sheet of paper and your distances and you would turn the azimuth for line and then you would measure the distance and, and you, you would and of course it's less accurate than actually looking down the line with a T16 50 years ago and so these lines are very very straight and they always will be and so I would say that's that's the practical use of least squares line least square or linear regression line work well what does, you, what does it look like on your map well that's the actual map, but what it looks like on the, the face of the map is establishment of Los Ranchos, linear regression, I show the bearing, and these things were in such a good line, even after I double determined them, you know, it was showing me one ten thousandths. Well, I don't measure that well, but that's how well the, the, the linear regression was, is that these coordinates were on a straight line. 
I'm probably plus or minus uh, three, four huns at 95% on these. And so in the event that I'm showing hundreds in my linear regression, which isn't uncommon, well, then what I would do is I would put that table that I showed you earlier right on my map. And I've done that many, many times. And now I'm not calling those monuments off. Think about this. Let's say that I'm at 500s at 95%. And that means that 95% of my measurements are within 500s. That means I have 5% or I fall outside of that. And, then, and these are my residuals. Well, if I put them all into a least square line adjustment, then I'm holding every one of those monuments to establish the line. And when I do the line, if they come out as being 300s off the line, 400s off the line, and my measurements are only good to 500s, I'm not calling them off. I'm just telling you that if you want to calculate a coordinate on the monument and you want to calculate a coordinate on the corner, uh, property corner, there's 300s difference there. And so if you want to, uh, do a control network, you'd want to use the monument coordinate, not the property corner coordinate. But I'm not calling it off, I actually held it to establish the line. I published the table so that you can retrace me uh, and because those hundreds would accumulate over a, of a different type of survey. So that's how you do it, is you publish the tables. And that's why we keep those tables that I showed you earlier. So that's, that's how you map it, that's how you use least square line. Now, of course, we have folks that are going to say, well, you know, we didn't have AutoCAD in my day or, you know, we, we didn't have the ability to do this. And uh, I'd say, well, contraire, you did have it. Uh, you didn't have AutoCAD, obviously, but you had the capacity to do it. And, well, let's back up. I think we can all agree that the test for licensure is a test for minimum competency, right? meaning you have to have this core competency so that you're not a danger to the public. So let's go ahead and look at a California 1976 exam problem. See what, see what they were testing you on. I'm gonna give you a little better look at this. This is the uh, zoomed out version. Let's go in here. This is LS uh, test problem 1976-C, page 10. And it's telling you, you know, you can do C6 or C7. This is a 15 point problem. And this is actually C7 with a weight of 15, 15 points, just like it says. Uh, I don't like to read to people because uh, they can read faster than I can read to them. But just in the event that you can't see this, here's what the problem says. Establish a straight line center line between the existing found monuments, found record monuments as located from a transit line. Show your calculations based on a logical solution of a straight line and its best fit under a given condition. Show your calculated positions of the adjusted center line and its relationship to the record monuments. No credit will be given for trial and error solutions. Well, 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 doesn't this look familiar? They show you stationing. If you look here, you have uh, 1 plus 0, 0. So you have 500, uh, 410 feet of monuments on the south side. Up here, you have uh, 155. You have 300 feet on the north side. These are all found original monuments. And they show you 2010, 20. And of course, this is, uh, these 20, that's a transit line. It's not the center line. And you would use linear regression to establish the center line or, and to establish the right of way shown here. Now, this was a 1976 test problem, pre AutoCAD, and it was on the test. Uh, this is uh, solved with a simultaneous quadratic equation, which frankly I can't solve, but I had the solution to this, and there's obviously a minimum competency thing for a land surveyor to be able to do this. The idea is not new. That's all you need to take away from this. So, and you don't need to know how to do it longhand because you have AutoCAD. So if you're gonna take two, two centerline monuments and call off all the front, probably not the best solution. If you're going to split curbs, one on each end of a block and uh, call that the center line, probably not the best solution. There's a lot more evidence left in the field. Boundaries are established by evidence. I would encourage you to do least square line re resolution to get all of the evidence that you find and measure set on equal terms for the best possible solution. It's time to put away our clown shoes, pack away the mini bikes, take up some least square adjustments in solving our boundaries. Thank you and have a nice day.